Welcome back to Cinematic. I'm Ryan. We're talking about kung fu movies, and I have got to stop doing this, but last week, right after I finished, or sorry, not last week, last time, and said that the next movie we were going to do would be Zoo, Warriors from the Magic Mountain, I don't have that movie. So I, I put it on the list and didn't ever acquire it. So I had actually started watching Warriors 2 because I actually had Evelyn with me and we're big Simo fans together. So that was going to be what it was this week. But then my copy of Zoo Warriors arrived. So we are going to talk about Zoo Warriors this week. But problem now being, I have to figure out how to talk about Zoo Warriors from the Magic Mountain because this is unlike anything we've seen so far. I don't know if it's the first necessarily of its kind. It's got to be an early example at the very least, but certainly for the movies I've been watching for this series, never seen anything like it. So I think to start, I need to talk about one man in particular named Robert Blalock or Blaylock, but one of the co-founders of Industrial Light and Magic. In fact, in the co-founding of that company, this is what his responsibility was. Listen to this. Create crucial ILM Vista Vision photographic optical composite and rotoscope animation production pipelines that would mass produce a record 365 Vista Vision to 35 millimeter Panavision, <laughs> Panavision anamorphic visual effects composites a little movie called Star Wars. So he did that, something that he later described as being akin to jumping out of a low budget airplane and then having to stitch up a parachute on the way down. But he won an Oscar for it eventually. And then went on to do other movies, such equally as important movies as Airplane, Cat People, Robocop, and Zoo Warriors from the Magic Mountain. So that might give you an idea of where we're headed with this. Think Star Wars meets Hong Kong action from the 80s, and I do mean from the 80s because even though we are kind of early on in the transition from something like a Lao Kar Lung film, which we still have more of, and we'll continue to talk about that wonderful man, but into something like a Sammo Hung movie or a Three Dragons movie. The Three Dragons are Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung, Yun Bio, who kind of spearheaded this new wave that's happening. We're early on in that transition, but I would put this movie and certainly this director who I did mispronounce last time, I believe, and I do welcome and love corrections, so thank you, Mitch, but I think I said Tsui Hark, and it's more like Choi Hark or Choi Hark. So I'm working on it. In fact, to give you an insight, I typically go to YouTube or some of the pronunciation websites when it comes to names specifically. YouTube, because I like to find an interview where either that person says their own name or the interviewer says it and then that person doesn't correct them at the very least. But some of the pronunciation websites, I get the feeling are about as effective as Siri. You know, like Siri still isn't perfect. She gets all sorts of weird words wrong that you'd think would be normal at this point. So I think there's some like normal text to speech out there that just isn't doing the job real well. So I'm going to try and avoid that from now on, but I do mean it. Send in the corrections. But yes, I would put Choi Hark in league with kind of the new wave that was cresting with Jackie and Samo and all that. Even though this movie, Zoo Warriors, is set in ancient China, it's set during the 16 Kingdoms period, which does figure in it was a, a period of great unrest. There were a lot of different wars going on between different factions and whatnot. But in terms of action and certainly comedy, this is, I would definitely call a, a kung fu comedy. Uh, this is certainly more in the, in the Sammo camp. And we'll get more into that within a couple movies, I believe, real, real soon. I think Project A is probably where we're going to have a few more words on that. For now, we'll just stick with <laughs> me trying to describe and do this movie justice in some sense of the word. So to begin, UNBO is a West Zoo warrior that very quickly meets up against Samo, who is an East Zoo warrior in red, UNBO is in blue, and they begin to fight each other in just the best, like they are literally saying slash slash block block as their swords meet. 
during this thing. And when other armies get involved, one yellow, one green, Yunbyo literally comments that, oh, this is a, a very colorful battle that we got going on. And to avoid them all, they pretend to fight each other, and then they pretend to play dead. It is, I'm not doing it justice, I laughed out loud numerous times. It is so good and so low budget, but in the absolute best kind of way. Like there's lots of work with miniatures. Uh, again, there's lots of uh, wire work and they don't do anything normally. Like the very first scene, Yun Bio shows up on a horse and like triple flips off his horse. And the way I know it's wire work is because you can see the wires. <laughs> and then triple flips back onto his horse, stuff like that. It's like they had a meeting where they voiced all these incredible ideas for a movie and somebody said, there's no way you can pull that off. And they fired that guy and did it anyway. And yeah, there's, there's maybe a little bit of suspension of, of disbelief that has to go on. You know, you, you have to buy in, but just barely for me anyway. Like at one point, it basically becomes kind of low-budget horror as Yen Biao's character escapes into a crevice in Zoo Mountain, and that's where some of the supernatural stuff starts to take place. These demons start flying around, and then a swordsman by the name of Ding Ying, who also flies around the place and defeats all of the blood demons in front of Yun Biao. So that's one of the dynamics that will continue on throughout the film, Yun Bio wants to be his student, as his characters often do, I feel like. So Yun Bio tries to communicate that the, the world is in a bad place. There's lots of wars and factions. It's so divided. Uh, he tries to get Ding Ying to help, but Ding Ying is like, well, what I'm dealing with is all of these blood demons and, and the lead blood demon, who, by the way, is played by Fung Ha Khan. Again, I don't know how many bad guys we've seen him play already. Uh, in f hmm. Apparently, the lead blood demon is also played at some point by Corey Yuen. They have the same credit. I recognized Fung Ha Khan. I didn't recognize Corey Yuen in any of his scenes, Corey Yuen Kui, or, or however you know him. Uh, but I cannot wait to talk more about him and the movies he made. So put a pin in that name for now. For this movie, he's listed as one of the action choreographers along with Fung Ha Khan and Yuen Bio and Another name that I can't wait to talk about in Mang Hoi, who plays the legendary Yi Shen in this movie, the dumb student of Abbot Xiao Yu, who is, the, that's the other team that there is. And they're kind of at odds with Ding Ying and Yin Biao, who still tries to play peacemaker during that. The message ends up being in the end, spoiler alert, that the uh, elder gods, so to speak, were a little bit caught up like the elder statesmen in the real world when it came to wars and factions and whatnot, even if, you know, Blood Demon seems like a more unifying bad guy that we should probably all want to defeat. But Mang Hoi is somebody you may have seen before, but also will keep popping up in movies of this nature and did go on to direct something that I'm not sure I will do an episode on because we did a full on book club for movies for it back in the day, but he directed uh, Lady Reporter or Blonde Fury or Female Reporter, might have been another title, but it's a fantastic Cynthia Rothrock movie. Can't wait till we get to the Cynthia Rothrock movies, but for now, Mong Hoi, great, also participated in the choreography here, and this movie very obviously requires an entirely different approach to choreography that I think they pretty much nailed for the most part, and I'll explain what I mean, but it's it's not one-on-one -on -one anymore, right? Like there's, in fact, I can't think of one real one-on-one -on -one battle. Like there's always something about it. There's either more or a lot of people involved, or there's some sort of projectiles or laser beams. There's actual laser swords in this movie at one point, so. There's a lot to consider when it comes to who's doing what where. And whereas it's usually pretty easy, like as long as you don't break the 180 degree rule or whatever, it's pretty easy to tell who's who and who's where in a Kung Fu fight. But as soon as you blow that up, obviously you run into additional issues with who is where, doing what, why to who, and all that stuff. And why I say they got it for the most part is because I don't think I was ever lost for the most part, but I was a little bit, and I'm glad I was, 
because this movie is so wild that that only added to it. Like, I feel like if I knew, if I had a handle on everything that was going on at all times, it probably would have taken away with, of, from what I enjoyed so much of this thing in the first place. So maybe I'm making excuses. I also have no idea how much of it's on purpose or, or not. But again, it feels like they didn't care. And I'm, no, that's, that's not a great way to put it. They cared in as much as they could make it work for the most part, you know, like they weren't going to not do something outlandish because, oh, I don't know, is this, are we going to lose the audience? It doesn't seem like that was forefront of the mind as weird as that might sound. It sounded like they just wanted to do something that looked freaking awesome. So let's just say that Chui Hark was up to the task. That's all I want to say. I don't want to take away anything from what he did. I think he did a fantastic job and he's unafraid of kind of the, as you can imagine, hopefully by now, this is a very epic movie. He's unafraid of those kind of swooping shots as a line is delivered. And there's at least three or four of them in here and they're all great and I love them. So that's a little bit of what was going through my head while I watch this thing and then look at the minute mark and see that it's only been 23 minutes. So not only has it flown by, but also all of that was just in the first 23 minutes. So it's wild. But also, I think if I had to categorize it, you know, fit it into a genre of sorts, I would put it into the genre of kung fu action gifts that you see on Twitter. You know, when you see something that's got like a lot of flying, probably some crazy projectiles of some sorts, maybe even a little tiny car that somebody's driving made out of also tiny flying projectiles of some sort. And I think where I hear about this the most often is with the guillotine movies, the flying guillotine and master of the flying guillotine which is now on the list. I know I'm starting with the sequel there, but I've heard it's kind of the more wild of the bunch. So that's probably the real first of these. Although I also don't know how supernatural that one is because truly that's, again, think of ILM where this movie probably sings and I could see how it might be a little off-putting to some people, you know, like if, you want to know why Cheng Mei, or Long Brows as he's called, has lassoed the blood demon's soul with his facial hair and eyebrows mostly. As that soul is pushed out of Xiao Yu's body, it sucks up all of the virgin skulls that are in the area and becomes this homunculus of horns that can only be destroyed by Wu Mei's legendary purple and green twin swords from Cave Beyond at Heaven Blade's Peak. Like if you're wondering why that's happening, there's no setup for that, or that is the setup necessarily for the rest of the movie. But if you're, <laughs> I guess I could see why some people might check out somewhere through that, even though that's just now we're 30 minutes into the film. So if you're not on board for something like that, I don't think there's anything I can say that's going to bring you on board, especially if you have a low tolerance for, again, some, some wires in the shot and certainly some cuts in the middle of a scene. <laughs> you know, like they've, they've finished an action and obviously they need to reset in a way. So it's just a quick cut. It's not meant to be part of the story, but you, you go with it because something else is gonna happen and you can't wait. And I could still be underselling it, honestly. There is a lot of it that would work in other movies. In fact, this is famously one of the inspirations for Big Trouble in Little China. So if, again, I don't know, I, I can't fathom a world where that movie appeals to you and this one doesn't, but if you're looking for a touchstone, that's kind of what you're looking at with Zoo Warriors from the Magic Mountain. It is fantastic. I, if you can't tell, I really did enjoy it. It's going to be a regularly scheduled rewatch, let's say, and a brilliant starting point for, again, a lot of these names that I can't wait to talk more about in Hong Moi, Corey Yuen, of course. We might have got enough UNBO finally, uh, but back technically not once we start with the Three Dragons movies. So uh, really love the direction that this series is headed that I've randomly created for it. Um, next week, we're going to stick, I think, with Warriors 2, since I'm already halfway through that. I got halfway through it, and then uh, Zoo Warriors arrived. So come back next time. We're going to do Warriors 2. I'm going to finish watching that, and that's what we'll do. 
And as always, go check out patreon.com slash Ryan underscore runs underscore if you want to support this and others like it. Speaking of which, there's a VCR video out there on the channel. I'm still looking at firing up the last-ish episode of Chasers for this season. And the, in fact, breaking news, the next Ryan Runs podcast episode video is going to be a Wallapalooza, where I, if you haven't noticed, kind of filled out the the room around me, the wall around me. So I'm going to go through what each and every one of those mean, kind of like an office tour, I guess maybe. I know those videos get some hits here and there, but I also want to talk about all of those stories. So come back for any one of those, and thank you for hanging out as always. So.